Premier League players will no longer be routinely taking the knee before every single match. Some clubs weren't all doing Not all players were doing it, but largely that was the norm. And basically, if you didn't do it, oh, big question marks. They'd been booing at some point. But clearly... Well, there are two options here. Either this was just always a completely empty gesture that did nothing, or racism has finally been solved. And that's why they're stopping. So I wonder which it is. Well, let's ask Ike EJ. He's a founding signatory of Don't Divide Us, an organisation against identity politics. Good morning to you, Ike. Good morning, Julia. How it's are you? Really, very well. I'm delighted we've solved racism and it was taking the knee that did it. Aren't you cheery today? Rejoice. It's all we had to do and it's all now finished and resolved. Brilliant. It's so. been lovely talking to you. Thank you very much. We'll go to the news. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, um, anyway, it's um, basically, I think the whole thing was, it's been exposed as a kind of empty gesture. I thought it was always a kind of pointless, performative, um, political gesture that's now been exposed as a kind of impotent sideshow because obviously, sadly, racism hasn't been solved and basically all the furore over um, the kneeing, uh, kneeling and people being booed as being racist if they didn't agree with it has all been exposed as a sham because they're not doing it anymore, which presumably either means racism is over, as you said, or people have realised, the FA um, have realised, the Premier League have realised that it wasn't doing anything and it was actually yeah. causing more division than it was. And it, and it certainly was. And again, this was a you know, this was a message that started, you know, with, a, I think, a very, a very heroic um, a protest against sp uh, police brutality, yeah. against black sure. people, um, yeah. uh, you know, by an American football player and who, who you know, <laughs> Come back, he actually paid the ultimate penalty of you know losing his his job yeah, and you know and, the, and being able to play the game he loved. Um, yeah. But the idea that this horrific killing of a of George Floyd by a black by a black man by a police officer in America that that uh, was 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 something that our Premier four football players had to take you know, to copy this gesture, this taking the knee gesture about. I thought was utterly bizarre given how many other murders there are of other people and, and other other times where those gestures are not meant. I, I I think that most players thought they were doing good and they were making an important statement about solidarity. But as you say, it just ended up causing more division. And certainly, I, if I'd been at a Premier League match where that would happen, I would be one of the people booing because a lot of people, including me, just, just don't want that sort of politics on the pitch. And taking the knee was a political statement more than anything else. Of course it was, yes. And as you say quite rightly, it's an honourable thing to oppose racism. Racism is an evil in society and nobody who's any good should want it. So opposing racism isn't the problem, but it's it's kind of merging that in with a political gesture, something that signifies a kind of naive importation of American politics, which don't necessarily apply here. That's what annoyed many people. And I think, I mean, we can laugh and joke about how racism's kind of cured now, but I think this did have a serious point because I do genuinely believe that this has set race relations back. And why do I say that? I say that because before all this came over, look, we had racists, we had racism, but I think generally in this country, most people thought opposing racism was a moral position. It was just the right thing to do. But what's happened now, opposing racism to a degree has now become a political decision, yeah. a political choice. And politics by its nature divides and alienates. Yeah. But, but also what it's become a situation where not just not being a racist, but this this thing about anti-racism and this yes. idea about white privilege and all of that. Yeah. And, and again, this idea that, you know, you know if you're, you're you, by definition, I must be, I, I have white privilege because I'm white and you must be a victim because you're black, as opposed well, exactly. to people working together. And again, the stats show that actually this is, I hate the, I hate the word tolerant that people use. Cause I think tolerant, <laughs> tolerance implies you putting up with something as opposed to yes. welcoming it. This has been, a, our society over recent decades and just even recent years has changed immeasurably in terms of a number of people who are ethnic minority and the mixing, that the interracial marriage is extraordinary extraordinarily high in this Absolutely, country compared to yeah. other countries and and the attitudes that people have exposed in you know online polls and, and things where people can be really yeah. honest shows that you know racism of course is still an issue for some people of course but, it is. but it's but it's it's falling at an incredibly rapid rate of course it is. exactly yeah and nobody nobody ever said i think that nobody cogent ever said racism is not an issue everything's fine no no it's not saying that the issue i think with taking the knee was kind of um merging opposition to racism with political positions political yeah. positions that invariably inv invariably sorry involved embracing the kind of divisive identity politics we've seen in the usa and they should be two different things opposing racism doesn't mean you have to take a political po 
and standpoint. It's a moral... Hear, hear to that. And I, I can't wait. I've always said I can't wait till Qatar in the World Cup in November, December to see what they're taking the knee about there because apparently we don't really care about women's rights or gay people's rights when we when it re when there might actually be a penalty for you in Qatar. Uh, thank you so much. Always good to talk to you, Aikije. Thank you very much indeed.